Good morning, you lucky guy. Good morning, Kim and Kofi, and I am a very lucky guy. This is one of those locations uh, that when people find out that it is open and the peaches are ready, they flock in. So I'm letting you know right now, the peaches are ready. I am at the Peach Tree Store, and uh, they have a fantastic variety here. Absolutely great peaches, and this is, this is locally grown. This is very, very fresh and absolutely tasty. And somebody who can tell me a whole lot more about about peaches, and I've been getting quite a lesson, is the beautiful, the talented uh, uh, Linda Smithcamp. Tell, thank you, first of all, for doing this, Linda. Thank you. Thank so you. we're looking at the peaches I'm seeing right here. What kind of peaches am I looking at? This variety is called Crimson Ladies, and these are a freestone peach, and actually all the peaches that we have here at our peach tree fruit stand are freestones, which means they come away from the pit. They're great for eating, canning, slicing, dicing, anything you want to do with them. And we have different varieties that come in all the time because we're open from May to October with our fresh fruit and our frozen products. And you were saying people should be checking your Facebook page Correct. Uh, to see which ones are in, because some have their, their own favorites. But the best way to find out, if you don't know what your favorite peach is, <laughs> then the best way to do it is come on down, sample a peach, uh, right. you, you, they, they'll tell you what kind it is, yes. see how much you like it, and then you sample other peaches because it's about every other week, you say, right. or every week, was it? Possibly, and we might have two varieties at the same time, and we always have a sample plate for you to taste to see which one you like the best. We actually think they're all really good, so uh, any they, variety you can't go wrong with. They all look great, but you, you can almost be a peach connoisseur. Yeah. When do you open, and well, first of all, let me ask you this. Yes. For uh, somebody who may not know where you're at, can tell me where you're at. We are on Minnewawa and Knees, just a little north of Nees Avenue, right across from Buchanan High School's um, stadium. And uh, we are kind of on the corner. You'll see a palm tree drive and just go a little bit further, and that's where we are. Easy to find, easy to get to, yes. and well worth the drive, and absolutely uh, delicious. And I know you have other products in addition to uh, just the peaches themselves. Correct. Uh, let's, let's do a sneak peek at it. We don't want to show them all right now. Okay. But I just want to give you, a, this blows my mind, uh, <laughs> the, what, what the variety that we have here. Yes. So what are we looking at just this corner of the table? Well, we've got our peach, pineapple, mango, salsa, and um, they're all from local growers here in town. We have 60 outside growers that we process peaches. We're the largest freestone peach processor in the United States. Wow. And so we freeze uh, about uh, 80 million pounds of product and added value stuff like our, our bags. We have uh, berry blend, strawberries. Uh, we have a spectrum blend. All of this frozen stuff that we have, um, we bring in different products and we add to it. So maybe a total of 125 million pounds of product that we process every year. Good night. Now, what do you do with a, with a bag like this? What's this used for? Well, a lot of times this is great for smoothies because it's all IQF oh. peaches and berries and um, uh, product. And what, what IQF means is individually quick frozen. So it has no added sugars to it. It has a little ascorbic on it so it won't turn brown. But it's all quick frozen in the bag so you can put it in your blender, make a smoothie, put it on top of your cereal, no added sugar. So it's a very healthy thing. A very good choice indeed. And you were telling me that you guys sell peaches all over the country. We do. We do. We are kind of a, um, a product uh, company. And so we add all of our, prod our peaches go to different products such as yogurt, ice cream, pie manufacturers. So if you have a peach and a product you're eating, it probably came from Wawona. But you want to try and get it right now from the source, and you can. I'm going to show you more of what's going on here coming up a little later on. Back to you, Kevin Coping. The Fresno County Fruit Trail, it's a great way to try locally grown fruit. And Jim Delavega is in Clovis with a look at how you can take a tasty trip. Good morning, Jim. And the key word is tasty, Kim and Kopi. Another thing about the Fresno County Fruit Trail that we were talking about, we're essentially talking about great local locations where you not only get to sample terrific food, local grown food, but you also get a history lesson. Because we're talking about uh, family businesses that have been around for generation after generation. We are at uh, the Peach Tree Food Stand, and it is just fantastic in regards to the selection of peaches that you have and the peach related products all of this is local and they have been in business forever here at the uh, peach tree fruit sand 
Linda, we've been talking to you throughout the morning. Can you tell me a little bit about the history? This whole area, very historic. It is. Well, we're on a property right now, which was my mother and father-in-law's Earl and Muriel Smith camp. And he bought the property right after World War II and started uh, growing peaches and then started processing them. And we had our old packing house just back down from here. They had about 500 acres that they grew and processed. And then we moved our fresh operation to Kingsburg and started a, um, in 63, we started the frozen operation, which is here in Clovis. And now we have three facilities. So yeah, there's a lot of history here. My mother-in-law started our fruit stand and it was the culls that she took from the fresh operation and sold them roadside from just a, a bin trailer. And um, so I've kind of taken it over from there. We've gotten a little bit larger, a little bit bigger. So we've been here for almost 35 years. It's grown, it's diversified quite a bit. You have a terrific product. But one of your best products, I think, <laughs> is uh, this guy. We were talking about it being family related. Who, who you got here? This is Beckett, and this is my uh, third grandchild, and he is my my favorite variety that we have grown <laughs> over here. So. He's not for sale, or my no. wife would be wanting me to bring him no. home. How old is he? He's four months old. Four months And a great old. peach eater. <laughs> <laughs> a very smart. Can you tell us a little bit about the variety? We were talking earlier. Now, this is what, what kind of peach? This is a coming? Crimson Lady. This is a Crimson Lady mm -hmm. peach. Mm -hmm. And every week or so, it's going to change what's yes. in season, what's yes. coming out. Be yes, because we grow peaches from May to October. And so oh. one tree doesn't last that, that long of a, of, a, of a time. So every about two weeks, there's a new variety that we have and we process. And so they'll be here at the peach tree fruit stand. And we have... Uh, uh, there's a variety that everybody loves is the Alberta uh -huh. and that comes in and the end of June and that's a great canning peach and it's really flavorful but pretty much all of our varieties are pretty top-notch and pretty flavorful. Uh, I, I think that looks terrific and what about this bird? Will he let me hold him? Yes! Hi big guy, <laughs> how are you? I think I'm gonna take you home with me. Yeah, oh what an adorable little baby. I don't know much about peaches but uh, I think I think, think he may be ripe. Yes. <laughs> Back to you, Kevin Kobe. <laughs> Somebody need a change? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the Fresno County Fruit Trail is juicily underway. I think and I just made up a new word. <laughs> That's a good one. And uh, Jim Delavega is uh, taking us on one of the delicious stops along the way. Good morning, Jim. Gummy Kim and Kelpie, delicious is exactly the right word, and this is all a local products. One of the great thing about the fruit trail is the fact it's a terrific way if you want to get your kids educated in the, uh, where their food comes from, not from the supermarket, but how it comes from the field, the effort and the time that goes into it, and then you get the fresh fruit. You do a couple of things. Uh, they learn uh, some important history, and they also get a, a, a big taste for the fruit. And there's a lot of variety you can, we can do with that. We are at the peach tree fruit stand, and I, and we, I've been talking to Linda all day long, and Beckett keeps stealing the show. <laughs> he, he's the little one right here. Tell us a little bit about some of this variety that you have. Well, these are our frozen products that we have here at the fruit, st fruit stand, as well as our fresh products that we have, too. And we've been here for almost 35 years selling out of the, wow. the peach tree fruit stand. Wawona has been here since 19... 63, the frozen part. Um, we have all these wonderful products for kids. Uh, we are kid friendly and a lot of our products are great to get to kids to have them eat their fruits and I know sometimes that's a tough thing to do but we have the frozen fruit cups which are of different varieties. They're great for school lunch, after school treats, uh, breakfast, anything. You could throw one of those in a, in a blender with some juice and a little ice and have a smoothie all set and ready to go. And then, of course, our cookies are just kind of to die for. And they've been disappearing they throughout been. the day. They have I been. may have had a few, but uh, just a few. photojournalist uh, <laughs> Ryan here, there we go. he's had more than a few. <laughs> yeah, he's a good taste tester. That's for darn and, sure. And we were talking about this earlier. What exactly is this now? That's this our, is a... our peach uh, pineapple mango salsa, which is delicious. And it's we have it here with chips, but it's a great um, topping for fish, for meats, chicken. I put it in a fish taco. 
Um, it's great. It has a little bit of a kick to it, but it's really refreshing, and uh, we've got it here at the, fr uh, the fruit stand. And, of course, you have the fruit. You have the peaches that we were talking about. Yes. And different kind of peaches. You've educated me on this. Yes. Come into season at different times yes. uh, of, of the year and different weeks, so folks okay. need to stop and uh, see what kind you have. You said they could go to your Facebook page. Correct. What we is have that a called? Wawona Frozen Food Facebook page, and we will be posting when we have the varieties coming, our hours, which uh, right now we're 9 to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday and then su um, Sundays 10 to 4 but once school gets out I've got to get my worker bees in here because I hire a lot of high school kids we'll be hoping 8 30 to 6 every which day. Which is another good thing that that you do the fact that a lot of kids this would be their first job yes and they get yes. a chance to interact with the public they learn about where food comes from right and and how the service industry and so it, it serves a lot of many many different facets with this. Yes. Now, you were telling us about the different kind we have. I just wanted to ask, uh, how old is this particular peach you're holding? This little peach here, actually, this is my favorite oh. variety. And he's four <laughs> months old, and so he's quite ripe, and he's ready ready for picking. <laughs> yes, he is. I think he's happy right now where he is. He's about the sweet yeah. spot. And so that's what's going on right now. Back to you, Kim and Kopi. Oh, how sweet. <laughs> and he's live in Hobbs Grove. Jim, are you okay? I'm off camera now, right? And Kim and Kopi, we're in a beautiful Hobbs Grove, and we have something spectacular going on. It's a great way for you to get some exercise, help out a good cause, and oh, by the way, you, you have to deal with some zombies. I'm going to find somebody who may know what's going on. I'm looking at, you look very special, sir. I do, uh, I. Uh, Bill Bob, I believe that's your name. Can that you tell us correct. a little bit about this event? Well, it's called the Mud and Blood Zombie Run. It's going on this May 31st on Sunday, and it's going to start at 8 a.m., and waves go every half hour until 11.30 a.m., and the proceeds for this Bud and Blood Zombie Run benefit St. Jude's Children's Hospital. It's for a good cause. Oh, it's for the absolute best cause in the world. Now, what kind of folks should come out here to be part of the Mud and Blood Zombie Run? Do you have to be an athlete? Uh, you don't have to be an athlete. You don't have to run through it. You can walk through the course if you want. But the whole object is to get through the course without losing your flags. That's what the zombies are going after. But if you lose all your flags at any given point during the run, fear not. We have what we call medic stations where you can get a drink of water and do a couple of exercise and re-up for some more flags and at the end of it all when you get through to the finish line you get yourself a nice shiny golden medal oh that sounds like a piece of heaven to win of that medal how many people take part in this every year well, we, we've got uh, probably over a thousand registered so far, and we, we usually get more than a thousand people. Who knows how many we're going to get this year? It's gearing up to be the biggest uh, mud and blood zombie run yet. Hot dog! Now tell me, you look like somebody who uh, who's not afraid of zombies. Oh, I'm afraid of zombies. Can I'm you, afraid of them. Can you give me a little preview of what it would be like if, say, the zombies were to come after you? A preview of what it's like. See, all you got to do is start. Running. I think they're coming. I think they're coming. You better go, Billy Bob. You better run. Oh, he is running. Oh, my gosh. He's going across. That is a tiny beam over a mud pit. This is a brave man. I'll tell you, Kim and Kopi, uh, they are doing, uh, he is doing a great job trying to stay away from these zombies. These are some fast moving zombies, but that is a faster moving Billy Bob, and all I can see is his dust. It's like watching the Roadrunner take off down the street, and he is gone. The Mud and Blood Zombie Run will be this Sunday at Hobbs Grove in Sanger. Again, the proceeds uh, they go to uh, St. Jude's Children's Hospital. It's a great, it's a great event. Thank you, Kim McCuffey. Thank okay, you, thank yeah. you, Jim. Be safe, buddy. Jim Della Vega is at Hobbs Grove to show you how you can do just that. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Kim and Kopi. It is beautiful here, if you don't mind the mud, the blood, and, oh yeah, the zombies. We're on top of what they call the beast. Now, we saw earlier the tire runs. This is how you go down, is down this area, and uh, it can be quite a challenge and just part of the obstacles uh, that are here. In fact, uh, let's go over and talk to see if Billy Bob made it across. We're walking across a little uh, causeway between these two buildings. How you holding up, Billy Bob? Oh, I made it to the top, taking a little breather now. I thought you were zombie food for sure. Well, fortunately, they're not going to, to eat my brains. They're just going for these flags. So I've still got a couple of flags left. And look at this beautiful scenery that we have here. This is all part of the run. We got this bluff over here, and at the bottom of that bluff is a dry, a dry creek bed where the people go running in and out of. And then over here to the east, they're going to go through this blueberry field. 
and uh, alongside the Kings River. And after they go around the Kings River, then they come back this way and they come up through some more obstacles. They come up over this beast on the other side of it and back over through there through some more obstacles. It's crazy fun. And it's a 5K filled with obstacles, filled with fun challenges, and of course, staying away from the zombies. And the goal is not to let them get your flags, as you were mentioning to me a little bit uh, earlier. And if people come and they, they don't want to do the obstacles, they can opt out. They just they can choose not to go over the obstacles, and we're not going to force them to do it. You know, the, the main thing is that they want to get to the finish line. So, so that way they get their nice gold medal. Now, also, they don't have to be a runner. They can choose to be a zombie. They can pay to be a zombie, and we'll dress them up, get them all gory looking and put on zombie clothes and then people could come out here and chase other runners and take their flags and be a zombie. Oh, that actually sounds like a, whoa, well, an awful lot of fun. Oh, I think some of them are having maybe a little too much of fun, but the beast is just one of the many obstacles. We're going to show you all the obstacles as we go forward. The run is on Sunday, May the 31st, and uh, it is just a lot of fun. And proceeds, part of the proceeds go to St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. So it's all going for a good clause. Okay. Billy Bob, you lost a flag. You lost a flag. Okay. You know, here's what I'm counting on. Some zombies eat brains. Luckily, I don't have any. So I'm completely safe. And I don't have any flags, so I'm okay. So uh, how long will this go on, on on Sunday? This starts at 8 a.m. Uh, gates are going to open at 7 a.m. or maybe earlier, and it's going to go until 11.30 a.m. Each wave starts in the half hour. So it starts at 8 and then 8.30 and every half hour until 11.30. That sounds great. And by the way, Billy Bob, there's somebody back at the station uh, who, who is, who's a big fan of yours. Her name is Kim Stevens. I know about Kim. Hi, sweetie pie. <laughs> Boy, I miss you. Hi, you're honey. so pretty. You know, you're my sweetheart by proxy. <laughs> by proxy? She says yes, honey. Uh, she has a picture of you on her desk, I do believe. Uh, so that's a picture of her in my trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing well, more we're live here. We're going to show you said. all the obstacles. Yes, yeah, so we're going to show you all the obstacles, and you'll probably get some more flirting from uh, your beau here, Billy Bob, uh, coming up. And I'm sure we'll find somebody who's going to be flirting with you too, Kobe. Uh, yeah, I can hardly wait. <laughs> Really, not necessary today. Thank you, though, Jim. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Jim is in Sanger with a look at how you can have fun while preparing for a zombie apocalypse. Good morning, Jim. Kim and Kobe, good morning to you. I got to tell you, it's very nice here. Beautiful, if you don't mind a little bit on the creepy side. You've got everywhere you look, you're seeing something on the bizarre side besides the zombies that are. Little subtleties uh, that have been added to the mix that really give it an extra amount of creep. We have... If you disregard the zombies, we have, you know, just uh, strange little things. Skulls laying on the ground, body parts, skeletal body parts all over the place. The thing over there, that little, uh, that little building right there, that is an outhouse. Or it's known in the De La Vega family as Jim's room. And here's the guy that has survived all this time. And I, I, uh, Ryan, um, our photographer, I owe you 10 bucks. He's still alive. Uh, Billy Bob. This is a fantastic event. It is a 5K filled with obstacles. So much effort has gone in this. The little bitty things are absolutely amazing. Uh, what should people expect when they come? Well, first of all, they should expect to have a whole lot of fun. This is a family-oriented event, and it's designed for entertainment, and we're going to be uh, helping out a good cause, St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Now, we're going to, like you said, it's a 5K run. There's obstacles. We're showing a few of the obstacles that they can expect. Then the mud that they're going to be going through, that's going to be the day of the run. Zombies running everywhere. People can pay to be runners. There's still time to register. You can go to mudandbloodzombierun.com, or you can go soul to soul in Visalia or at River Park in, in Fresno. Know, and you can do it online. You can also do it the day of registration, but it's going to cost you 10 more bucks. Ah, so you want to do it now. You it's a smart now. way to do it. And let's explain how this works. So essentially, you'll be wearing a belt, and you'll have these flags. And if the zombies get the flags, no, not right now. <laughs> if the zombies get the flags, the flags, yes, they are. Uh, that, that, that's how you know that you're dead. But you say there's a twist, that you have medics. Now I'm out of flags, okay? So now what would you do in the race right now? The, we have several medic stations throughout the course where you can get a drink of water and you can do a series of exercises to re-up your flags to, so you can continue running with flags and not uh, go across the finish line uh, empty flag. That's, that's so the, me the medic may say, give me 10 jumping jacks. Exactly, and yeah, or, you know, um, you know, run in place for 10 seconds or do a five or six push-up, something like that, you know. 
And you, do you know roughly how many obstacles that you have here? I'd say we have at least 20 obstacles, at least 20 obstacles. I and mean, that's just right off the top of my head. I have to go think about each one of them. But besides that, we've got some beautiful scenery. You know, besides these scenes that you're looking at right now, I mean, just look how beautiful it is out here. It's shady, it's green, it's gorgeous. That's the whole thing. When you just look at this place, it is absolutely gorgeous. You add a few zombies and some nice little subtle touches, and they are the kings of the subtle touches and the not-so-subtle touches. The net result is it becomes creepy, and it becomes creepy very, very fast. Well, Billy Bob was a nice guy while he lasted, uh, but I, I think his flags are being eaten, and I'm pretty sure his brain is being considered an appetizer by about uh, now. We're going to keep you updated on what's going on and show you a couple of more little... Oh, he's down! Oh, no! A couple of more little obstacles <laughs> on their way. i got to go save Honey. my buddy Billy Bob. Stick <laughs> yeah. around. we got a lot more going on. Back to you, Kim and Kobe. Well, all I know is it's safer in the studio. I'd Grove to show you how you can do all those things. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Kim and Kopey, and uh, we've had a very exciting morning looking at just a few of the obstacles. Billy Bob amazingly, fantastically, superheroically survived that last encounter. Very impressed. It was pretty terrifying, but I made it through it, and uh, just want to remind everybody this uh, Sunday, May 31st, it's the Mud and Blood Zombie Run. It's a 5K obstacle course through mud while being chased by zombies. Benefit St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Starts at 8 a.m., goes every half hour until 11.30 a.m. I'm going to try to finish the course here. I've just got a few more obstacles uh, during the run. This is going to be filled with mud, and I'm going to go up and over that plank. It looks like it's pretty safe now. I don't see any zombies, so I'm going to make a run for it, okay? All right, all right, go for it, Billy. Wish me luck. Great Wish job. Me luck. I'm, I'm sure to the finish line. you've got this thing licked. I don't see any zombies. He is doing a fantastic. Oh, look, he just right up on top. And, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, they came out of nowhere. They seem to be flocking on him. Oh, the horror. It's just unbelievable. Billy Bob is now being consumed. Somebody has gotten his flag. His flag has been bitten by somebody. I am so worried about Billy Bob. You know, but you got to be an optimist. He was a nice guy. He had a nice run. Uh, you can have a nice run as well this Sunday, as he said. This is at Hobbs Grove. It goes for a very good uh, cause. You get a lot of good exercise, and you have a blast on these obstacle courses. If you see anything you don't want to uh, actually do, you can go around it. You can actually even walk the course, and you can even bring kids uh, to the event. It's going to be a lot of fun. And again, as I mentioned earlier, I am protected. Zombies eat brains. I don't have any, so we're okay. Kim and Kobe?